Nikki, thanks so much for your time. Consensus was for the economy to contract, by, but not by the quantum in which it has contracted in the first quarter. What went wrong in calculations? Uh, well, in our case, we're not that far off. Uh, we had a decline of 1.5%. So, um, and in fact, you know, when we punched the numbers, you could easily see that it could be weaker, um, depending on on how some of the services categories played out. So, yes, I suppose it's a surprise given what the market forecast was. But if you actually worked on the monthly numbers, uh, you would have gotten pretty close um, to, to that sort of decline, um, the way the way we worked it. So uh, the main, uh, I think, reason for the weakness is that uh, we have had that very high base in the final quarter of last year. So in many ways, this set of GDP numbers, um, they are highly distorted by base considerations. So there is a fair degree of statistical noise here. Because what we think might be happening is that we're overestimating the recovery that occurred last year. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of that, it's reflecting a much weaker picture in the first quarter than was necessarily the, ga the case on the ground. All right. So just to make sure I understand you correctly, so the, the declines that we're seeing in this agricultural sector down 24%, mining down about 9.9%, manufacturing 64 this was expected. The problem is that we came from too high of a reading in, in, in 2017, the final quarter there. Yes, I mean, the other thing that was expected, of course, was the sharp decline in domestic trade accommodation and catering. So that one, your wholesale, retail, motor trade, all of them contracted according to Statistics SA's numbers in the first quarter quite heavily. But what made those declines so severe, in our opinion, is that you had that very sharp acceleration in activity towards the end of last year. So your final quarter's number, I mean, just look at the GDP outcome, it's 3,1% mm. in, in the final quarter of last year. And remember, this was at the time that no one quite knew who was going to lead the ANC. That was only decided towards the end of last year, mid-December. There was intense uncertainty. We've come through a whole year of uh, incredible political uh, strife and tensions. And, um, you know, you had, despite all of that uh, and those negative forces, you had this incredible run-up in retail sales um, and consumer spending uh, that pushed your GDP number to a very strong figure in our view. So th I, th I think the reason the number looks so severe, which is undoubtedly a shock to the market, it is mainly because it's work, you're working off such a high base, which in our view might be slightly inflated. Mm. And then do these numbers change your outlook for the rest of the year? Um, it does change the outcome. Um, you know, initially we expected a 1.8% growth for this year as a whole. Um, now assuming that you do see a recovery from the second quarter onwards up until the final quarter, um, we thinking that growth of, you know, somewhere between one5 to to 1.7 percent is more likely. Mm. Uh, Nikki, I mean, we were chatting off air with, um, or on air rather, with our analyst here, saying that the economy needs a lot more support than just the uh, increased investments that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president, is trying to shore in. The consumers clearly need a lot more support. How do you think the Reserve Bank governor will digest these numbers? I actually don't think it will change the Reserve Bank's view of the situation at all. Um, they would have anticipated a weak GDP number in the first quarter. Um, over the year as a whole, looking over the next three years, they still expect growth to continue on this sort of gradual patchy recovery. Um, that is most of the GDP forecast out there, including ourselves. Um, so this picture wouldn't, uh, th this outcome, I, I don't think would change their view of interest rates that dramatically. The focus for them firmly would be on the inflation front. Uh, we had already seen um, in the May NPC meeting, there was a slightly more hawkish tone. There was talk of uh, the upside risk to the inflation outlook having increased a little bit. And if anything, it's probably increased even more than at the time of um, uh, the NPC meeting in May. Uh, we have seen the rand, you know, wobble a bit in the face of, you know, very erratic moves and, and global risk appetites. And if you think of the factors that are behind those global risk appetites on the changes in global risk appetites, I don't think they're going to be resolved quickly. You know, you've got renewed political turmoil in some countries in Europe. 
Uh, I don't think there's any quick answer to those problems. Um, you've also got uh, the universal tariffs imposed by the U.S. Um, completely unexpectedly. Um, I don't think there's a quick resolution to those issues. Um, and at the same time, uh, you've got the prospect of higher inflation in many of your advanced countries and monetary policy tightening and, and your low-risk destinations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from the Reserve Bank's perspective, it's probably safe to assume uh, that the RAND will be under a little more pressure uh, during the remainder of this year. Um, plus, food inflation will probably turn the corner, as, you, as you've seen in these GDP numbers. Agricultural output is lower. Um, and, you know, you've got fuel prices edging higher across the globe. Um, so that's an inflationary force. Plus, you've got the effect of VAT coming in. So from their perspective, I don't, I don't think it's going to change. If it does anything, it probably the weakness in the economy um, or the first quarter's number might just convince them to keep rates unchanged for longer. It won't convince them to necessarily cut it. And then, Nikki, I mean, in this very difficult uh, picture that you've painted for the consumer for the rest of the year, where will growth come from to prop South Africa's uh, economy to the 1.5% uh, levels uh, by the end of the year? Well, um, you know, this, this is a tricky question, and, and we're going to have to watch what happens in mining and manufacturing, I think, very closely. I mean, at this stage, our assumption is that because you're in the midst of a global upswing, and because you've got commodity prices drifting higher, under a normal business cycle, this would be incredibly supportive to an economy like South Africa's, um, because we are primarily uh, producers and exporters of commodities. 60% of our exports are somehow related to commodities. 36% is essentially for commodities, gold, uh, platinum, iron ore, and coal. So you would think that that would provide quite a powerful little boost to the economy. Having said that, though, it's not visible in either the mining or manufacturing sectors so far. So it is a bit of a worrying thing. But our assumption is that it will come through in the second, third, and fourth quarter of this year.